So first, let's go over parts of the forofter. So the first step here is that you have this knob up here. This is to lock and unlock the forofter. You want, when you're fully adjusted, you want them, you want to lock it. That way it's not going from side to side. So the second object here is your leveling adjuster. So this is adjusting to make it sure it's level for the patient. So you'll want to make sure that the bubble's right with, in the middle of the white dot there, or the dot's in the middle of the bubble. And then you also have this, this adjusts the pupillary distance. So you want the pupils to be in the center of each lens, adjusting it for the space between the eyes. You also have this knob here. This is to open with the underline. This is to close with the OC. And so you'll use this, primarily these two uh, nod, notches here on this machine. And then this is your sphere, this larger wheel here. And then you have this, which is your Jackson cross, this whole unit right here. This is for prism. And then you also have your cylinder and your axis adjustment. When you put in cylinder power, you'll see the marking for that here. So let's begin. We'll have the left eye closed. We're starting off on the right eye to begin. And you'll uh, be seated to the side of the patient, that way you don't block their view. But since we don't have a patient, we're going to use it this way. So we'll start out with sphere. So usually we go in the plus direction to begin. So here's one, that's two. If the patient says, oh, I don't like this one, it's worse, or about the same. Let's go back to this option here, that's Plano, they call it. So here's one, that's two. Let's say that one's better. And um, depending on their vision, you kind of anticipate how many quarters of power they need. One quarter equals a line of change. So if they're 20-25, that's one line off of 20-20. So that should be about one quarter of change. So if they need more than that, then you can adjust that at that time. So let's say this is their sphere. They already said everything looks the same. So at that point, then we're going to move on to the astigmatism power. So I'm going to move the Jackson cross into the way. And the first thing I'll want to do is just check to see if they need any astigmatism correction. Now the way that we do that is to put in a quarter of power. So I turn this knob to add in plus one quarter. And then we're going to adjust it. You can adjust it on any of the quadrants that you want to start. Usually I'll just start at 180 so I can keep a mental note of where I am to start. You want to adjust the outer knob so it's on 180 or whatever your axis is. You want the P to line up with that axis so that you can also adjust it each way. So we'll have it right here. And then that's where we're going to start. And then we're going to ask the patient which is better. Here's one, that's two. Now let's say the patient says one is better. What that's telling us is the patient doesn't want power in this area of the, of the dial. So that doesn't mean that they don't want astigmatism, it just means that they don't want astigmatism here. So we need to investigate a little further. So I would go to 135. So we'll put the axis indicator right here on 135. Now the P automatically will drag along to that marker. And then we'll do this. So here's one, two. And when you do that, let's say they still said one is better. So this red, they don't want the power. That's what red's telling you. Red means stop. And then white, if they say they want white, that means they do want power in that area. But they haven't said that yet, so we don't know that. So we'll go over to 90 degrees. So we'll go another 45 degrees away. So here's one, that's two. Let's say they still don't like it. They wanna, they just don't like power there. So we're not completely done yet. Let's try 45 degrees. So we'll adjust it to 45 degrees. We'll say one or two. And this time we're just looking here. We're not looking at any of their dial. So they want two this time. So that tells us that they want astigmatism correction. So we've got to find out where they want it exactly. So they want it around 45 degrees. We're just not sure exactly where at 45 degrees they want it. So we're going to adjust this knob like so. So you want this knob to be lined up with 45 degrees. So you can do that with your finger here. Okay, that looks accurate. So now that that's adjusted, you can look at either side of the dial. 
um, since you see this visibly, you might want to follow this side of the dial. So this is your 45 degree marker. This tells us to go, we want up towards 60. If it flips it this way, that means we want down toward 30. So we'll keep an eye on that marker. Here's one, that's two. So the patient says, oh, I like two. Well, that tells us that they want to go more toward 30 degrees. So we're going to adjust the dial. We're chasing the white, moving it over to the 30. So here's one, two. So let's say they still say one, one is better. So we'll go back down to one. They're going toward four to 15 degrees now. Here's one, two, two is better. So that means that we've passed the axis that they want. We went too far, so we need to go back. So I go back by five degree increments. So we'll go to 20 degrees this time, just small pieces. Here's one, two, they still want two. So let's go back five more degrees. And then we'll do one, two here. Mm, it's about the same. So that means that they want to stay at 25 degrees. So this time we figured out where they want power. We've got to find out how much power they want. So let's just adjust this knob here. So we're going to adjust it back so the P is on the axis. So here's one, that's two. They say they like one. That tells us that they want power on this axis. We haven't given them enough. A quarter is not enough. So we're going to use this outer knob here and give them another quarter. And we'll do one, two. One is still better. So that means that we'll give them another quarter. And then here's one. That's two. Two is still better. So we'll go here. This time, they like the red dot. That tells us they don't want any more power. We've already given them just plenty. Or that they may want to go back. So at this point, we're going to move this whole Jackson Cross out of the way. And I usually recheck them. A lot of times with the Jackson Cross down, they tend to pick up more power than they may even need. It might just look good to them in the instrument. So just double check yourself. Here's one. That's two. Just back up a quarter. And if it's about the same, I tend to leave them a little less. That's up to you, that's discretionary. Here's one, two there. Well, it looked good before, so we'll go back. So that's where they wanna be right now. They like that amount of astigmatism correction. That's your sill power here. That's the axis, so plus 75 at 25 degrees. And they also, now that you've added in two quarters of cylinder power, you also may need to adjust your sphere. So we'll go back. Which is better, one or two? They say two. And that makes sense because we've adjusted the cylinder power by a minimum of two quarters. So a lot of times they'll need a quarter of minus to balance the prescription. So this eye is complete. At this point, you're done. You would occlude this eye, switch over to your other eye, and do the same process. There's also another technique that we'll need to discuss, and that's fogging. That's a way to double check your prescription it's really common for uh, people that are minus, that are younger, uh, they t easy to over minus, so you might want to use it on them. Or if you're just unsure that the, the sphere power is correct, you can check it there also, especially with uh, latent hyperopes. That's another good method. So we'll be back with you in just a second and we'll take a look at that method.